Dear friends in Christ, grace and peace to you from Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Well, I must admit, I'm a little bit of a news junkie, have been for most of my life. I like to know what's going on in the world, both locally and abroad. Perhaps some of that stems from the fact that I delivered newspapers for seven years when I was a boy in Bismarck, North Dakota, and often found myself reading the day's headlines and everything else that we find in the paper. So it's interesting then throughout the church year that every so often a scripture reading for that particular Sunday just falls in line with what is going on in the world around us. And I can't help but think today is no exception. That with everything that has transpired over this past week, it seems to tie beautifully in with our scripture reading that Scott read not long ago. Everything that took place in Charlottesville or in Finland or in Barcelona, there was something that continued to kind of emerge from the pages of scripture. And I'm going to invite you to turn to page 893 in your pew Bible. There you will find our reading from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 15, And as I read and reread the text, in light of everything that has transpired this past week, there was one word that continued to jump off the page for me. And that is the word mercy. So look at verse 22. Just then a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. The language of mercy, at its very core, compassion and love, more often than not, for those who are cast to the very fringes of society, for the marginalized and for the oppressed, for those who are more often than not the most unwanted of the unwanted. And it is in that mercy that we find a loving and life-giving God that comes to you and me. And so in today's reading, we encounter this act of mercy. We encounter this sense of mercy. Jesus is in Gentile territory. If you remember over the past few weeks, Jesus has been incredibly busy. A couple weeks ago, he fed 5,000 plus people with two fish and five loaves of bread. Last week, he walked on water. I don't know what your week was like, but that's all quite impressive. So Jesus is in Gentile territory because he is hoping to get a little bit of a respite, to kind of get away from the crowds as they have heard all of these miraculous things unfold. They want to be near Jesus. They want to be in his presence. And Jesus is hoping to get away and find a little bit of respite, a little bit of time to catch his breath. So he goes to Gentile territory. But his plan was initially to go to the Jewish people first, and then the Gentiles. But he couldn't do that because his plan was interrupted by this Canaanite woman that we encounter in our text today. She was persistent, and she came to Jesus and she said, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. Now, this woman that interrupted his plan was truly of the heritage and the culture from the most unwanted of the unwanted. She was the definition of an outcast, of one who is pushed to the fringes and margins of society. That is who she was. And there's another thing about this story, too. And that is she was a woman speaking to a man. And at that point in time in history, that itself was never to be seen. So not only does she approach Jesus when she probably shouldn't be, but she begins to question him. 
She begins to nag him on, asking him to have mercy on her because of her daughter who is tormented by a demon. She begs him to release and free her daughter from this unclean spirit. But what does Jesus do? He ignores her. He doesn't pay her a whole lot of attention until finally the disciples say, Jesus, come on, you got to do something or say something. And that is then when we encounter this moment in this story that can be quite uncomfortable, this exchange between Jesus and the Canaanite woman. Jesus uses the language of dogs. Now, I wish I could tell you that the dogs Jesus was referring to was to those canine companions that so many of us have. I have two of them, Coda and Lulu. They're precious. I love them. But those are not the dogs Jesus was referencing. The dogs that Jesus was, Jesus was making reference to was anyone who was not Jewish. It was an offensive metaphor used to insult and degrade those who were not Jewish. So this Canaanite woman and all Gentiles... When we dive into this story, this interaction between Jesus and this woman, it is very apparent that this woman should not have been there. She should not have been present with Jesus, and yet she was. She didn't give up. She persisted. She continued nipping at his heels, asking him to have mercy on her, and to free her tormented daughter from an unclean spirit. I think that's beautiful. She didn't give up. And I cannot help but think in that very moment, in that interaction that Jesus had, an aha moment. Yes, even Jesus learned from this interaction that God's kingdom reached far beyond even his comprehension out into the entire world around us. That God's love for you and me and the entire world reaches far beyond what we can understand and comprehend. So this story, this story of the Canaanite woman and her encounter with Jesus challenges anyone who believes That God's love, that God's mercy are restricted to just a few. Are restricted to just a few chosen people or a certain group of people. As a child, there was a beautiful painting that hung in the fireside room of my church home growing up. It was a beautiful painting of Jesus. And there was something about his eyes in the painting that drew you in. They were compassionate, they were loving, they were reassuring, and they were blue. It wasn't until I was a little bit older that I realized Jesus wasn't Scandinavian. (laughs) Most likely Norwegian. And the 5,000 plus people he fed, those two fish, had to have been Norwegian salmon. (laughs) If we look at different cultures in the world, we discover that Jesus is often represented in their cultural image, their cultural identity. I have a cross that is in my office that was given to me by a Native American friend, and it is a Native American Jesus on the cross. But the historical Jesus, the historical Jesus looked nothing like me, looked nothing like most of you. The historical Jesus did not look like me, talk like me, act like me. The historical Jesus certainly didn't speak Norwegian and didn't speak English. And yet, he still came. He came for you and he came for me. He came into this world to free you and me from sin, death, and the devil, even though we look nothing like him. 
He came into this world. God reaching far beyond our understanding, far beyond our comprehension, out into a world that claims each and every one of you as a child of God, as beloved, in whom God is well pleased. He doesn't look like me, talk like me, and yet he still came. There are no boundaries. No boundaries present. In fact, as Christians, if we begin to draw boundaries as to who wins and who loses, who's in and who's out, if we begin to think about those who are less than or greater than, more often than not, we will always find Jesus on the other side. God's reach goes far beyond ours. And with that said then, there is no room for hate in this world, in our lives and in our actions, because love, compassion, and mercy are at the very core of who we are as people of God. At the very core of who we are as Christians in this world. There's no room for it, because love and mercy and compassion That is the light of life that must shine into this world. Whether it's at home, or at school, or at work, or wherever we may find ourselves. The things we say and the things we do, how we act, it matters as people and followers of Christ Jesus. For God is love. Those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. In his writing, Mere Christianity, C.S. Lewis said this, Do not waste time bothering whether you love your neighbor. Act as if you do. And you will presently come to love him. May we show that same love, compassion, and mercy to our neighbor, wherever they may be, That same love, mercy, and compassion that God showed to the Canaanite woman and shows and gives to you and me each and every day through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let it be so. Amen.